Okay, here we are. Um, what we're doing here is we're trying to find the area of a regular polygon, and the way that we're going to do it is we're going to split it into triangles, and we're going to find the area of each of those triangles, and they're going to be equal triangles, because as you can figure, since this is a, a regular polygon, in this case a regular hexagon, every side length is the same, and they call this the radius from the center out to the vertex, okay? Going out to the vertex is different from going perpendicular to the side, as you can see, right? So what they've shown you here is that you've got this circumscribed circle, okay? It's basically a circle going around the very outside of that polygon, and the radius of the circle is the same as the radius of the polygon, okay? Um, circumscribed, that means that the circle's on the outside. There's also a word called inscribed, which is like if you had the, radi the radius of the circle um, as the apothem, and then the circle was big enough to just barely touch right there, right there, right there where these apothems would touch. Okay, that would be inscribed. Okay, um, the, this circumscribed circle is really just to, uh, just to show you that we're calling this the radius, okay, out to the vertex. And the apothem is the 90 degrees straight down, because remember what you want, you want a base and a height in order to calculate the area of the triangle. So once you know that that height, that vertical height, 90 degrees from the base, um, then you have the measurements that you need. Got it? So just reading this over here, um, area of a regular polygon is related to the distance from the center to a side. You can circumscribe a circle about any regular polygon like that, and the center of a regular polygon is the center of the circumscribed circle. The, because remember, like if you took if it's a regular um, polygon, there's going to be one uh, one spot in the center that's equidistant from all the vertices, right? Okay, and that's that's going to be the radius um, from the center to the vertex. And the apothem is the perpendicular distance from the center to the side. Let's apply this to some problems. Okay, so here we are finding angle measures. Um, this is going to be the, the first part of this because we need to start to make the calculations to find the information we need, okay? Uh, so, figure at the right is a regular pentagon with, a, with radii and an apothem right there drawn. What is the measure of each numbered angle? What is the center angle is going to be a good first thing to figure out, okay? And let's just game this out before we talk about this. This center angle right here is going to be Five, one of five equal angles that sum to 360 because going all the way around is 360, right? So if you know how many equal triangles you've got, you can divide that by five. Um, this apothem just splits that angle in two. So angle number two is going to be half of what you get there, okay? And then because you're forming a 90 degree angle here, this angle right here and this angle three together will form 90 degrees. So once you find angle two, you can subtract that from 90 and find angle three. So let's read their notes, okay? Measure of angle one in the center here is just the full 360 divided into five equal parts. Divide 360 by the number of, of sides because the number of sides is going to be equal to the number of vertices and therefore the number of triangles, okay? This, each side is the base of a triangle. Um, measure of angle two is one half of measure of angle one because the apothem bisects that vertex angle. That angle right there is bisected by this apothem, okay? Um, because it's an isosceles triangle. Now, how do we know that the radii make isosceles triangles? Um, the fact is, the pentagon is a regular pentagon, and so you know all the radii are congruent. Let me move this out of the way and finish it, okay? So this, these radii are all equal, and so that means that you've got at least, you've got two sides of the triangle that uh, are congruent, and therefore a triangle made by two adjacent radii and the side of the polygon is an isosceles. Um, it, this looks like maybe it's equilateral, it's actually not, but uh, we don't know that this is going to be exactly equal to this. Um, you'll, see it, you'll see when you know that, actually. There's a very specific circumstance when you know that. Okay. Um, anyway, let's get this out of there and give us some room to work. So knowing that, we say, okay, half of 72, because we did all 360 divided by 5, got 72, half of that is 36. And now remember, if this is 36, and this one is definitely 90 because it's perpendicular, then 36 plus 90 plus whatever angle 3 is is going to be equal to that 180 degrees in a triangle. 
and it is 54. So now you've figured out all three of those angles, okay? So here's your got it problem. Uh, I'll read it to you, and then you'll pause it to find your answer. At the right, a portion of a regular octagon has radii and an apothem as drawn. What is the measure of each numbered angle? So you're going to have to consider the fact that it's an octagon to figure out what that angle number one is, and then use that information to find the rest of the angles. Pause your video now, and unpause it when you have your answers. Okay, so what do we need to do? We essentially just need to say that just like up top here, the measure of angle one is equal to 360 divided by the number of sides. Measure of angle one equals 360 divided by the number of sides. And in this case, the number of sides is eight because they say it's an octagon, okay? And what does that equal? That equals 45 degrees, okay? So what does that mean for the rest of the angles? Okay, well, if the measure of angle one is 45 degrees, then the measure of angle two is half of that amount, or 22.5 degrees. Yeah, because the apothem is splitting that central angle into two equal parts, it's bisecting it. Now, uh, remember, if there's definitely a 90 degree angle here, okay, then angle three is gonna be whatever what you get when you take angle two away from 90. So if we do 90, take away 22.5, and of course we have to put our decimal in a zero there to make it a problem we can do. Nine becomes an eight, and this becomes a 10. And that 10 becomes a nine to make this a 10, and now you have enough to borrow. You borrowed enough to take away that five. 10 minus five, five. Nine minus two, seven. Eight minus two, six. So we've got 67.5, so the measure of angle three is 67.5, and there you have your answer to your three measures. Okay, so moving on. Postulate 10-1, if two figures are congruent, then their areas are equal. That is, that should hit you as really intuitive. Like it's, yes, of course, of course they have equal areas. They're the exact same size and shape, right? So uh, that's, that's hopefully intuitive to you. And uh, then here we've got this little note. Suppose you have a regular n-gon, some number of sides, with a side length of s, okay? The radii divide the figure into n congruent isosceles triangles, like we said. The number of sides, and that's what the n-gon is. The n there is the number of sides. That number of sides, you're going to get that many triangles, right? Going from vertex to vertex all the way around. So um, you will get n congruent isosceles triangles. And since if you can know the area of this, then you could say, oh, well, they're all the same all the way around. And so we just multiply by how many we've got. By postulate 10-1 right here, the areas of the isosceles triangles are equal. So each triangle has a height of A, uh, the apothem, and a base length of S, the side length. So the area, of course, is one half base times height, right? That's the area of a triangle. One half the base, side length, S, times the height, the apothem, A. And that's what you get there for the area of each triangle. Now, since there are N of those, one, one two, three, four, blah, 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 N, the area of an N-gon, the entire area, is that area of one triangle times the number of triangles that you get. And the number of sides is going to be equal to the number of triangles. And that will give you the area of the whole thing. Pretty slick, right? So the perimeter then of the n-gon is the number of n, number of sides, n, times s. So in other words, if you said there are, well, basically what you're doing is you're taking this piece, n times this piece, s the number of sides times the number of, uh, or the length of a side, rather, I'm sorry, the length of a side times the number of sides, that, 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 that. And you can take that N out, and that S, N times S is the full perimeter, and you can replace it with P, okay? Perimeter is just the number of sides times the length of a side, 
Okay? So knowing that, you can then do this and you can say, okay, the simplified formula is the perimeter of the whole thing times one half times A. Okay? And again, that makes sense because you have uh, you have to take one half A times S right here times however many triangles you've got, and that's going to be equivalent to the number of sides, so times N. And if you do the number of sides times the side length of each one, that's what the perimeter is. Okay. Now, what we've got here then is the simplified formula. Area of a regular polygon is um, half, half the half because, oops, because remember we're dealing with triangles and you always do one half base times height. Um, that's what it's based in. And one half the product of the apothem and the perimeter. Yeah. So let's apply this, see how we, how we do once we know that. All right, so what is the area of a regular decagon at the right? Uh, well, it's, it's below, I've moved it, but uh, what do we know about this particular figure? So um, a decagon has 10 sides, so N, the number of sides, is gonna be 10. N equals 10, because remember, we're using the formula that we got. Um, okay, and we know that the apothem right here is 12.3 inches and the side length is eight. If we wanted to know the perimeter, because we need that for this simplified formula that remember we just came up with, the perimeter is just the side length times the number of sides. If it's eight on each side and there's 10 sides, eight times 10 equals 80 and we know the perimeter is 80 inches. So now we can fill that in here. We could say the area is one half, the apothem length of 12.3 times the, the perimeter, which is 80. Okay, and this is simply cal calculator strokes. Um, but if you didn't want to do calculator strokes, just you want to do a little fun, fun math real quick, sure you do. Okay, here's my little fun math. We're multiplying one half times 12.3 times 80. Okay, and 80 is actually we could say, instead of calling it 80, we could call it eight times 10. Let's do that. Eight times 10, that's the 80. And that we got that from eight times 10, right? Eight units on the side times 10 sides. Okay, why am I doing that? Because you can match these up. You can match this up. And multiplying 12.3 times 10 moves the decimal over one and gets you 123. And matching these two up, one half of eight, is four, and then you just get 123 times four. And that's a little bit of a simpler math problem that you can do once you know how to juggle things around and use them. And just doing that math, we get 492. And since the units were inches, the units here were inches, um, area is always gonna be the unit squared, so inches times inches is inches squared. So you have then an area of 492 inches squared, okay? Um, you have a got a problem. Let's do it. It's on the next slide. Okay. Um, you can make a sketch of this if you want. I don't know that it's 100% necessary if you know what parts you're trying to do, but um, what's the area of a regular pentagon with an 8 centimeter apothem and 11.6 centimeter sides? That's the first thing you're going to calculate. And then there's this reasoning. These reasoning problems are really awesome for getting to the heart of okay, what if we changed something? What would that do? As a general rule, they're asking if the side of a regular polygon is reduced to half its length, how does the perimeter of the polygon change? Explain. And uh, you can, you know, actually kind of draw it out and try it, take, take half of it, see what the new perimeter is, whatever. Um, you're gonna pause the video now. You're gonna answer both of these questions and you're gonna unpause it when you have your answers. Do it this way, I know I keep saying it, but do it anyway. Pause this now and try these. If you're not doing this, then you're not doing the work you need to do to really master this, okay? And if you understand it, then it seems pretty logical that you should be able to do this problem. So prove it to yourself by doing it and showing, yeah, I know how to do that. And then if you don't know how to do it and you get it wrong, then that's gonna come out when you compare your answer to mine. But if you don't have an answer to compare uh, to mine, you're just gonna nod and say, yep, and you're never gonna know whether you really knew how to do it. So pause the video now. 
Okay, so uh, if it's a pentagon, it's five-sided. And remember, if we want the perimeter, we're going to be calculating the uh, length of a side times the number of sides to get the perimeter, okay? And then the area will be, as you know, one-half the apothem length times the perimeter. So uh, let's figure this part out. What is the perimeter? Well, we've got a side length of 11.6 times the number of sides, and it's a pentagon, so times five, all right? Um, and that means then the perimeter is going to be, you can use a calculator, but uh, I don't have a calculator available and I don't really need one. Uh, we go five times six is 30, carry the three. Five times one is five, plus three is eight. Five times one is five. And there is one decimal, there's one digit in the whole problem up here. There's one of the digits in the numbers is after a decimal. So that's what we need to have in our answer, one digit after the decimal. And we've got a perimeter of 58, okay, uh, specifically 58 centimeters. So to calculate the area of the entire figure, we say one half the apothem length, which is eight times the perimeter, which is 58, okay? And we can calculate this area then by saying, okay, uh, I like to I like to take one half of eight is four, right? That's just a, a mid step that we can then say, okay, now four times 58, because watch, you can do this in your head. What is four times 50? Four times 50 is 200, okay? And what is four times eight? 32. So four times 50 is 200, four times eight is 32, 232. What were the units? They were centimeters. And we're talking about area, so it's centimeters squared. See how nice and easy that was? Okay, now, if the side of a regular polygon is reduced to half its length, how does the perimeter of the polygon change? Well, uh, let's, just take a, let's just take a basic uh, pentagon, okay? And let's say you had a, a side length of 10, okay? Then the perimeter is 10 times 5, or 50. If you took half the uh, side length, it would now be 5 times the number of sides is 5, and it'd be 25. So if you take half of each side, you're going to end up with half the perimeter. And that's just something that you should logically be able to puzzle out. Um, and I think that making simpler problems, like you could have said, okay, well, what, was, what if we did half of 11.6 and got 5.8? Yeah, you could do that. But isn't it kind of easier to pick an easy number and just see what's happening with easier numbers? So I suggest that general method of, um, you know, answering these kind of reasoning questions by saying, let's, let's simplify the thing down. We don't need to take it as, with the most complicated numbers. If it works under all circumstances, then we can pick easier numbers and see what happens with those easier numbers to come up with the general rule. Okay, uh, we've got just a little bit more and we're done. All right. Um, this is, this is the one that I was referring to when I spoke uh, about the need to apply the unit eight concepts of special triangles to um, some of these problems. So here's the problem, and then you'll see where it comes up. Um, a honeycomb, right? The bees make honeycombs. It's this tessellating fit shape, this figure that they all, you can just nuzzle, nuzzle another one next to it, and they just fit it with no empty spaces next to it, okay? Um, honey combs are brilliant constructions by brilliant creatures. Um, a honeycomb is made up of regular hexagonal cells and the length of the side of a cell is three centimeters, okay? So what's the area of the cell? Now, they're not giving us the apothem, so we're gonna need to calculate that out. So here it says, you know the length of a side, which you can use to find the perimeter, we need the apothem. So the plan is to draw a diagram to help the, find it, and then we'll use the uh, eventually the area formula for a regular polygon, which is one half the apothem times the perimeter. So find the apothem. Now, if you drop this length, this apothem down and just label it as A for apothem, you'll see that you're taking, uh, essentially, this is where I was saying before, you know you'll have equilateral triangles here if you have a hexagon, because a hexagon 
then splits into 60 degrees for that central top angle, leaving 120 degrees to be equally split here, and equally splitting them will give you 60. So you get 60, 60, 60, and an equiangular triangle is also an equilateral triangle. Okay? Now, if you drop that apothem down, you're splitting that 60 degree angle into a 30 degree angle, and so now you have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay? And we know the relationship between the short side and the, the, sorry, the short leg and the long leg of a triangle. And let me see if I can take a screenshot and just stretch this a little bit bigger. Um, okay. um, just to get a, a little bit better view of it. Um, okay, so we can use the 30, 60, 90 triangle knowledge that we've got where the long leg is just the short leg times the square root of three. And you see that right here, okay? The radii form, Six, 60 degree angles at the center, so you can use the 30, 60, 90 triangle to find the apothem. And if A, the apothem is equal to the shorter leg times the square root of three, then we've got 1.5 times the square root of three. Now we know what the apothem is. And we can find the perimeter by saying, okay, there's six sides, so if each side is length of three and there are six sides, we have a total perimeter of 18. So when you write this into the formula, you say the area is one half the apothem length, which we just found out is 1.5 times the square root of three. You can use your calculator for this. Times the perimeter, which we found to be 18. Three, 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 and three. Okay? And then it's just simply a calculation in your calculator. You type it in, you get approximately 23.38. Um, it doesn't give the, uh, the uh, kind of degree of precision that we want it here to the tenths place, hundredths place, or whatever. So they've just rounded it off to the nearest square millimeter, because you can see there are millimeters as units, so the square millimeters for the area, and it rounds to about 23 millimeters squared, okay? The big ideas here is that um, when you're doing a hexagon, you know you're gonna get 60, 60, 60 equilateral triangles, and then therefore the apothem will turn it into a 30, 60, 90, and you can use the relationship between the 30, 60, 90 triangle sides to find missing values, okay? Um, there's a got a problem for this, and then we're done. Okay. The side of a regular hexagon is 16 feet. What is the area of the hexagon? Round your answer to the nearest square foot. Um, the problem didn't come with this hexagon, but I embedded it just to give us something to sketch on, you're gonna to wanna to write it down and maybe sketch it out if that's helpful to you. Um, but you're gonna pause the video now and you're gonna come up with the area for this doing what we just did. And when you're done, you're going to uh, unpause it and check your answer. So please pause the video now and do this problem. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna say, uh, let's say we've got this center of this hexagon right here, okay? Then I can draw two radii like that. And we know that this, because it's a hexagon, there are six sides and we're splitting this 360 degrees into uh, six equal angles. And so this is 60. Now, if we were to draw the apothem, oops, like that, we would then have that 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And of course, uh, we would also have the fact that if the side length is 16, then we have a partial length here of eight feet, right? Okay, now of course we need to know what the apothem length is. And since we know that the apothem is just the longer leg in a 30, 60, 90 triangle in this case, then we say, if the shorter leg is eight, then this longer leg is going to be eight square root three. That's the relationship between the short side and the long side in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, okay? So that's the first part. Now, we wanna find the perimeter because we're gonna need to use this formula. The area of this whole figure is one half the apothem length times the perimeter. So how do we find the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is just the side length times the number of sides. So 
What is the side length? The side length is 16. Don't accidentally use eight. We use that for the half side here for this triangle. Okay, the actual side length of this is 16. And how many sides are there? There are six of them because it's a hexagon. So then you get a perimeter of 96 feet all the way around the outside of this, okay? So if we then plug in those numbers, we say the area of the entire figure is one half the apothem, which is eight square root of three times the perimeter, which is 96. And calculating this out, um, we can do, we can take one half of 96 is 48. If you wanted to do it that way, say 48 times eight root three. And what is 48 times eight? Um, that's actually one that I don't know in my head. So I'm gonna say 48 times eight. Sorry. Carry the six. Eight times four is 32 plus six. 38, 384. So we've got 384, remember, times the square root of three. Okay? And we're going to approximate that. I'm going to use my calculator. Um, I think the square root of three is 1.732 or something like that. Um, let's see. Just a moment. Three, square root of three, yeah, 1.732 times. 384, don't round it off. I'm using the actual number from the calculator. Don't round it off before you multiply by 384 because times 384 is a big amount. And so any small amount that you would round off if you didn't keep this full value in the calculator, that small amount gets multiplied by that and it becomes a significant amount. Um, and when I hit equals, I get roughly 665. It's 665.1075 something. But they said to the nearest foot, so approximately 665 feet squared. And that is the area of this whole thing. Another way that you could write feet squared would, could be square feet. That is also equal amount. Uh, anyway, that is the answer, and you're done with this. Uh, hopefully this all made sense to you. Good luck. Email me any questions you got.